Hello guys, welcome back to Patrick TV GH. This is your saving suitor, Mr. Patrick Van Abankwa, coming your way with another edition on this wonderful channel. Today we are going to focus on some investment opportunities that you can put your hard earned money into to be able to earn some returns. Um, over the years, we've been speaking about developing the savings culture. But after you develop the savings culture, the next level that you need to push up to is to invest that money. What are the investment opportunities? Where do we invest that money? And that's what we are going to focus on um, today. Um, as I said in the introduction, we are going to look at the investment opportunities out there for you and I in the year 2022. What are the risk factors that go with it? The, the categories of investment are out there and what are the savings culture that we need to also imbibe to be able to invest well. And as I said, I have with me Mr. Yohanathan Aite. He's an investment advisor who works with Sentinel Asset Management. And he's here with us today to explain the investment opportunities out there and how we can benefit from it. Uh, Mr. Aite, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Tim. Yeah, um, to uh, have this interaction with your members. How is the family? Everybody is good. Everybody is doing well. We thank God. We thank God. I've, I've heard so much about you in terms of your apt and your in-depth knowledge when it comes to investment. So I'm blessed mm -hmm. to have you on this show. Wow. Thank <laughs> you for such lovely words. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So let's go straight into the, the, the discussion for today. When you say someone wants to invest, what's an investment? Okay, so an investment is basically having some resource or an asset. So for example, if you have cash and putting it into something that will generate uh, profit for you in future. Okay. Um, it's not something that works overnight. Okay. So an example is basically using your money to rent a shop, buy your goods, inventory, put it in the shop and sell. You would make some money on day one, but you will not make hundred percent that you expect in day one okay. it will take a number of months a number of years for people to be familiar with your business and the business to grow before you start seeing the kind of profits that you expect okay so so from from what you just said it means that if someone is investing the mindset is that i want to invest in, let's say thousands this this month mm -hmm. and by the end of the month or let's say next month I'm, i want to get a profit or interest of the same thousand cities or hundred cities it means that that's a, a wrong perception to start with. That, that is, that is it's not necessarily a wrong perception. But then again, it depends on what you're investing in. You might find something that you think you can easily turn money over. And that's what is called very high risk investment. Okay. You also have a great chance of losing your entire thousand cities. So there are various categories of investments that are based on your risk perception as an individual investee. Okay. There are certain investments that, if you think about it, it might not make sense that you put your thousand CDs in and in a month's time you get a thousand CDs back. Okay. But the other investments that have the potential to earn you, you put in a thousand CDs and you can get 200 CDs back at the end of the month or what have you. But then those investments come with a certain level of risk that you must understand and be willing to take on that. Okay, risk. so with that said, I think then we can now move, move into the category since we've already yes. touched on a few things. What are the categories of investment that we have in Ghana? Okay, so in Ghana, we have five traditional investments. Okay. So our investments are, investments are generally broken down into two. We have traditional and non-traditional. With regards to the traditional investments, we are talking about investments in financial securities that okay. are issued by either government or private corporations in the financial space or investment space. Okay. So I'm just going to run through them based on the increasing level of risk. Okay. So the investment category with the least risk, we are looking at treasury bills, treasury bill. okay. which is basically giving money to governments. Okay. And then at the end of the period, government gives you back your money with your return or profit. Okay. And that is broken down into, we have a three month maturity, a six month maturity, and you have a one year maturity. Okay. So how long do you want government to have your money? And based on that, how much interest are you expecting government to pay? Okay. There is this traditional view that government investment is risk free. I was about to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> and in reality, um, in some Af some countries are, are around the world, it's not been the case where some governments have defaulted okay. because they have taken monies from their citizens and then invested it in certain projects that have not generated the return that is expected. And because of that, the governments have found themselves um, in very precarious situations. 
Okay, so so that's about the treasury yes. bill. Okay, so what's the next so one? So the next one is the uh, treasury bonds, which is the same as investing with government. However, with the treasury bonds, your maturity exceeds one year. Okay. So you give government the money and you invest in a two-year bond, a three-year bond, or a five-year bond. And what's basically going to happen is that government will pay you interest every six months. Okay. And then at the end of the two-year, three-year, or five-year respectively, you get your principal back. Yeah. back. So you give government a thousand and in five years time, you get a thousand back. But every six months over the life of the investment, government to pay you a portion of the interest for cash flow. Okay. Then we'll move next to fixed deposits, which is basically investing in a bank. Okay. So if you have you bank with any of the commercial licensed banks or a savings and loans company or a finance house, they are licensed and regulated by Bank of Ghana to issue fixed deposits. Okay. Those investments tend to also be short term, generally under one year. Okay. And they also have a relatively higher interest rate because you are exposed to the risk of that company collapsing. Okay. And if that company collapses, there is a chance that you will lose all your money. Wow. So with instances of the banking crisis, which occurred in 2018 during the financial sector cleanup, it is not always that government will intervene to ensure that your investment with a bank is safe. Okay. Because if something should go wrong, government can decide that this is not one institution you want to bail out because of one reason or another. Okay. And you, the investor in that institution, can lose your money. money. Okay. Then we come next to mutual funds. So mutual funds are basically collective funds where members come together, put all their money together, and then a licensed professional will invest on their behalf. Okay. We've had we have many examples of mutual funds and unit trust on the market. Some issued by the data bank, some issued by Stanlib. We have some issued by EDC. At my own company, we are launching our own in a couple of days' time. Okay. And these are products that professionals are managing on your behalf. The professional's job is basically to conduct all the research to ensure that they're investing the money with an issuer or a company that will pay the money back. Okay. You as an individual, you might not have the chance or opportunity to go and visit all of these companies to go and look through their financials and talk to management. So, so, so mutual funds are basically designed such that everybody brings their 50 CDs, 20 CDs, 10 CDs, 100 CDs, 1,000 CDs, 300 CDs. You put it in a pool fund and then it is managed on your behalf. The okay, so what, what means is that when it comes to the profits from out of the pooled investment that we are, we are going to put into an instrument, you are going to share the profit in the same according to how much you bought. Yes, so it is a, it's it's based on the amount you have contributed. Okay. So if the return is ten percent, you brought a thousand CDs. Somebody brings one CD. Somebody brings five hundred CDs. Somebody brings hundred CDs. The return that has come will be distributed based on how much everybody has contributed. So okay. the one who contributes the most will have a higher portion of the okay. total return. Okay. And that's how they, they, they work. Okay. The, the final one, with regards to the traditional investments, we are looking at equities. Equities, and okay. Equities is basically the shares or the stocks that we keep hearing about, the stock exchange. We hear the likes of MTN, of GCB, of Standard Chartered, of Benso, SIC, and what have you. These are companies that are listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Okay. Now, equity investments is basically you own a piece of that company. You are an owner okay. of that company. You can go to shareholder meetings and then deliberate on the discussions and contribute your ideas on how you think the company should be run. Okay. At the end of every period, what normally happens is if a company has been profitable and the directors decide that they want to distribute those profits to shareholders, you will get what is called dividend. And that is the income that you can get by owning shares. Not all companies pay dividend. I was about to ask you, so when you say directors decide, so does it mean they can decide not to pay? Yes. And if they decide not to pay as a shareholder, what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you gain within the period? Yes. So directors can decide that based on two things, based on the current performance of the company or based on the future performance. If they foresee that 
next year might not be a good year. They can decide to hold on to the profits from last year and use that profit to manage the business better so that the business doesn't have to collapse. Okay. Now, if you are not getting dividend, what you could also benefit from is called capital gains. So you buy MTN at IPO, that's the initial public offer at 75 pesos. And then after six months, it is now one Ghana CD. If you sell your shares at one Ghana CD, you have made 25 pesos profit, profit okay. on that particular investment. Okay. So, however, you can also buy MTN <laughs> at 75 pesos yeah, and it can drop down to 50 pesos and you would have lost 25 okay. pesos okay. on that investment. So high risk. So it's a very high risk investment option, okay. but it also has the potential to give you very high returns. Okay. Okay. So, so this, these are basically the traditional uh, investment opportunity. What, what about the other one that you mentioned? So the non-traditional investment opportunities are basically deciding that you want to start a business. Okay. That is outside of the financial um, investment market. So okay. if you want to start a business on your own, that is also an investment. You use your savings or you take money from friends and family or you borrow money, put that together and you start a business. Okay. Or you want to go into real estate, you will see that you have an opportunity, you want to buy land and invest in building and selling those houses. That is also one thing you can do. You can also decide to buy land and just wall your land and leave it and okay. wait for it to appreciate in value. In Ghana, we have an axiom where land prices never depreciate. It's always appreciate. It's always going up. Okay. If you lived in the West, you realize that land prices can also depreciate. Okay. So if you have land, you can decide to buy, hold, and then sell it okay. later. Okay. Um, for those who love risk and who understand, you can go into cryptos. <laughs> for <laughs> That is one option. Yeah. <laughs> for those who are interested in that um, in that investment okay. and for those who have studied it you will see that the returns are very high but then the risk is it's very important. real yeah. because i know people who have almost lost their homes due to cryptos yeah so you need to be really appreciate what you are investing okay so, in. so that brings us to what are the factors that you need to consider when you want to select any of the options that you've mentioned either the traditional or the non-traditional yeah so the first two that i'll talk about I will see I would, I'll classify them as knowing oneself. Okay. The first is what is my investment objective? Why do I want to invest in the first place? Okay. Am I investing to fund my retirement in 10, 15, 20 years time because I want to live a certain lifestyle? Okay. Am I investing because I want to build a house? Am I investing because I want to go and do a master's or a PhD, or am I investing to pay for my children's education in 10 years' time? Okay. So once you know the objective and the purpose for which you want to invest, that is very critical. The next thing with finding yourself is, or knowing yourself is, what is your risk profile? Okay. Do I like risk? Okay. Do I shy away from risk? If I put a thousand CDs in an investment and it goes to a hundred CDs, will I contemplate suicide? Or will I contemplate, uh, will it shatter me? Will it ensure that I will not be able to even feed my family? Okay. Those, how would I feel about that? If you know that, look, you cannot stand risk. You are more afraid of losing money than making money, money okay. it means you are risk averse. Okay. So you don't want to invest in anything that has the potential to wipe you out completely. Okay. So one, what is your risk objective? Number two, identifying what your profile, your risk profile is okay. as an individual. Then the third thing is, do you understand the investment you are doing? Okay. And that is critical. That has been missed a lot in our investment climate in Ghana. Okay. And that is why a lot of people were investing in all sorts of things. When things went belly up, they came and I didn't understand. I wasn't sure. I was deceived. You need to do your own research. You okay. need to make sure that you, you don't need to understand the technical aspects of it. But can you convince a five-year-old that this investment is good? If you can explain it to a five-year-old, that is always my benchmark. If you can explain it to your children, it means that you understand it and you can speak to it. So when it even goes belly up, you know why it has gone belly up. 
Okay. As opposed to, I don't know what happened, or I don't know what is going on. I was on. just there. I was yeah. just there, and then I had that collapse. <laughs> and so you need to really understand, do your research on every single investment. It's just like I was saying, opening a shop, you won't go and put a shop on the motorway, knowing very well that nobody's going to stop. Yeah. But if you are going to open a shop, you identify a place where there's good traffic, where there are bus stops, people use their pedestrian pathways, so okay. you get a lot of traffic. There is good parking. Okay. So you need to do your research before you invest. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think um, it has been an educative session on Patrick TV today. We've been looking at the investment opportunities, and we just touched on the things that you need to consider when you want to invest in Ghana. Viewers, I believe that we have all learned a lot from today's session. So going forward, if you want to invest, as our, our resource person said, what are your investment objectives? What do you seek to achieve? What is your risk appetite? And the investment opportunities have also been explained, the traditional and the non-traditional. The choice is now in our hands. Put your savings into an investment vehicle so that you begin to earn more than this, what you are earning on your savings account. And I believe that that is what we believe and do and teach on Patrick TV GH. If you have enjoyed our session today, kindly subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on all social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We'll be right back next week with another edition on this wonderful channel. See you.